Daniel chapter number 8. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, this is two years after chapter 7. The 7 and 8 are not in order. A vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, that after that which appeared on me at the first, chapter 7. So this is an addition to what chapter 7. More information. So this is a verily, verily. And I saw in, the, in a vision. And it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan. And that's the palace. It's the next world capital power for Daniel, which would be Persia. However, he dreamed about four beasts in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in my vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Now, this is exactly how Ezekiel, and this is exactly how John. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river. Now, we saw a sea. Last chapter. Now, here's a river. A ram which had two horns. And the two horns were, <clears throat> were high. Probably horns that the hunter would value to get. But one was higher than the other. And the higher came up last. So the little one was first. The higher one was second. And I saw the ram pushing westward. And northward. And southward. Missing eastward. So that no beast might stand before him. Now we saw beasts in the previous chapter as nations. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will. And became great. So whatever he wanted to do. Now ram is a male sheep. It was the symbol of Persia. Horns in the Bible are representative of kings and power. And as I was considering, thinking what this dream was all about, made him think. Behold, an he goat came from the west. Um, in the Bible, east to west defied. It's the wrong direction. In the Bible, direction is east to west. He's coming west to east. On the face of the whole earth. And touch not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn, singular, between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, Media and Persia. So Daniel's jumping over Babylon. He's seeing the next country, the next leaders, the Medes and the Persians. And he's seeing them de being defeated. Never mind. Between 538 and 330 B.C. was the Median and Persian period. We're right about 553 B.C. right now. So he's jumping over 200 years ahead of all the reign of the Medians and Persians. Of the Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther period. Now it's remarkable. That Alexander the Great, who's never mentioned in the Bible by name, son's name was Aegeus, or Aegeus, Aegeus, son of a goat.
all the animals or all the names that he could have named his son without knowing the Bible knowledge, he named his son the son of a goat, and now we're looking at a goat. He came to the ram with two horns, had two horns, Median Persia, which I have seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him, Alexander the Great, come close unto the ram, and was moved with choler, that is, anger. Deep anger. So Alexander the Great was angry with the Medes and the Persians. And smote the ram. And brake his two horns. Dyrus and Osiris. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. Kingdom fell. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him utter victory. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. There was no America. There was no German. There was no other allies that could help. The Medes and the Persians had fallen to Alexander the Great. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great. Yes, he did. He gone on to, to conquer Tyre, the world. Just couldn't conquer the drink. And if you ever wanted to study somebody, study Alexander the Great and who he performs to be with his birth, his mother. You know, he does perform to be born of a virgin. <laughs> and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great. When he was strong, the zenith, the great horn was broken. Alcohol. And for it came up four notable ones. Toward the four winds of the heaven, north, east, west, and south. I'm going to try to get this right. Alexander's kingdom went to his four generals. And you can probably look these names up. Gladys Western Europe, Lestimicus, North, Silius, Eastern, Tamalayan, South, Egypt. He just happened to have four generals that took over him. They, didn't, they weren't really successful. How come we didn't have five sons to take over? How come we didn't have one son to take over? How come it had to be four like the Bible said was four? Now, nine never happened yet. Now, Antichus, whatever his name is, Hippodemus, did do some things in 10... 75 AD, but not to the fullest of what we're going to read. <clears throat> and out of one of them, one of the four notable horns, came a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the north, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. Well, guess what that is? What land would God say is his land? Not America. So this little horn comes out of the four notable horns. And it waxed great. And it's not his general. Even to the host of heaven. Revelation 12, 3 through 9. And it cast down some of the host and the stars to the ground. And stamped upon them. That's Satan. Revelation 12. He drew a third part of the stars from heaven down. Yay! As God said. 
he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of this, his sanctuary was cast down. Yes, this was done in 1075 A.D. And you can read about the event. But we're talking about Satan here and what he's going to do. When he sits in the temple and proclaims to be God, guess what he's going to do? Oh, wait a minute. They're going to have the daily sacrifice? You mean the law is coming back? That daily burning of the lamb in the morning, in the night, in the evening. He's going to put an end to it. The Jews have to do that according to the law. He's going to stop it. And when that law is instituted again and, and instituted and begun and started in that temple, and when they go back to the law and then you tell them you can't offer your sacrifice, that's going to be a terror to the Jew. Just as much as when they open up that veil into the most holy place and there he is sitting there. That idol shepherd who sets up an image for all the world to fall down and worship. You're getting in Daniel, aren't you? Yet he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Of his sanctuary. What did we read today when we read about the brazen altar? His fire pans, his pans, his... Satan has a sanctuary. Must be religious. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. That follows Satan, transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. These hosts, they cast the truth to the ground, they practiced and prospered. Hmm. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint say unto the certain saint that spake, How long? shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of the desolation uh oh uh oh Jesus spoke about desolation we'll pick it up in uh, 817 to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And he said to me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That is six point four years. That was some dream. And it came to pass. When I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision <clears throat> and sought for the meaning. Daniel had no idea what he saw. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the of Uli, which called. And said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Gabriel is standing there with Daniel right now. And he gets an order. You tell Daniel about his dream.
So he came near where I stood. The same one that spoke to Zacharias, John the Baptist's dad, the same one that speaks to Mary. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. Luke 1, 12. And fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end, there's the subject of the dream, shall be the vision. We're going to look at the end. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in deep sleep on my face toward the ground. Daniel hit the ground on his knees and fell asleep. But he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last day of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media, Dyrus, and Persia, Cyrus. No doubt about it. We're told. The rough, the, uh, the rough goat is the king of Gersia, Alexander the Great. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, that's Alexandra. The goat is the nation. The horn is Alexandra. The ram is the nation. The horns are the king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall come up out of the nation. But not in his power. They, they come up because of his death. And the four em empires into which Alexander's empire was divided about 300 B.C. Greece, Asia Minor, including Syria, Egypt, and the East. They like said it was given to his general. And in latter times, much later than Alexander the Great, of their kingdom with the transgressors are come to the full Romans 11 25 the end of the Gentile nation a king of fierce continent and understanding dark sentences will stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't it wonderfully great with destroy? And shall prosper and practice. You run that back to verse 12. That's the Antichrist who's going to practice. And prosper. Maybe a doctor. A doctor practices, doesn't he? And shall destroy the mighty. What's the last four words in that verse? He's going to kill God's people. He's going to kill Jews. The mighty. Well, I know two mighty men are going to be killed by him. Moses and Elijah. Samson would be no match to this. And you got to be careful with words today. Media were... Uh, me, excuse me, I didn't mean to say media, did I? I'm sorry. And through his... Policy. You heard that word? 
through Satan's policy. Also, Satan shall cause craft. You mean witchcraft? To prosper in Satan's hand. I'm reading the, the pronouns to Satan. I'm not changing the word of God. And Satan shall magnify himself in Satan's heart. Satan has a heart. And in Satan's heart, he wants to be worshipped. Not as God, instead of God. And by peace, Revelation 6, 2, shall destroy many. There is coming a time on this earth, peace will come. And when world peace comes, Men will be destroyed, and the Antichrist, Satan, has come. So, when you sing about a baby being born bringing peace, you can be singing about Jesus Christ, or you can be singing about the Antichrist. How's that? Because they're both going to bring both. They're, go they're both going to bring peace. This one peace is short-lived. And will be destruction. Satan shall also stand up against the prince of princes. and But Satan shall be broken without hand. No one's going to lay their hand on him. It takes an angel to bind him up for a thousand years. And after that, and he's let loose and then he's put into the lake of fire after he gets an army. <clears throat> the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision. Don't tell anybody. For it shall be for many days. It has been many days, hasn't it? And I, Daniel, fainted. <laughs> Dayton is, uh, Dayton. Daniel just got a revelation of what Satan is and what he's going to do to his people. Chapter 7 and chapter 8. Afterward, I rose up. You can't describe what that tribulation period is going to be. And you're not going to master it like these Christian films say they're going to. You think you're going to defeat Satan? He's been on this planet for 6,000 years dealing with man ever since Adam and Eve. You think a computer solenoid piece of plastic or whatever, silicone, you think you're going to finally defeat Satan? You are a liar. Because you know what you're saying with those movies that, oh, we're, we're going we're gonna to master the Antichrist? You are saying you are smarter and wiser and more powerful than God, who, can, who is the only one that can beat Satan. And by the way, for you Gentiles, if you don't realize that this tribulation period we read about, it's called Jacob's trouble. I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. This is how horrible and incredible this vision is. He fell asleep, I mean, he felt sick, not at the dream. Because the dream ended in verse 14. He falls sick and faints at Gabriel telling him what the vision was all about. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. Daniel is still among the rulers of the nation of Babylon, 
even under Belshazzar. And Belshazzar didn't have any idea who really Daniel was when his party night. And I was astonished, like a stone, astonished at the vision. But none understood it. We don't have no revelation. We don't have the words of Jesus Christ who speaks about Daniel's vision. There have been no Medes and Persians. There's been no Alexander the Great yet. And the book is closed. The vision is closed. Not ready yet. What do you think is going to happen when those Jews finally get to realize what their Old Testament says and that the Old Testament is showing the, the, the New Testament as fulfilled prophecy? The New Testament, the Gospels, fulfill the Old Testament 100%. The New Testament fulfills of what the Jew wants. What the Jew wants today. Those Jews who really love God and are not doing right. The fact is that they're going to get that promised land. They will have a temple again. They will have a king again. They will have a priest, uh, priest, cast, uh, priest class. They will have a high priest. They will bring offerings with love and dedication to God all in right. But before they do that, they're going to be doing it to Satan. Before they're going to do it for God. Had they believed on Jesus Christ as their Messiah, things would have been different. But they didn't. And things are where they are. The Jewish people, the next great event for them is not the rapture. That's the church age. The next great event that happened any time now is a time called Jacob's Trouble. It's seven years long. Satan has been put in extreme authority and power over all. And he enters into the tribulation with peace. Worldwide peace. And you read those horses, uh, I forget what it was, 6, I think it is, Revelation 6, I believe, comes in with peace, Revelation 6. And you read those horses that follow. He comes in as a horse with a bow, but no arrow. Then you read what follows after him. And those things will be the seven years of the tribulation period that are left. And then you read the Bible says about God with, with vials, with trumpets, with woes, with seals. And then the Jews realizing at one point in time, we haven't got there yet, but the, the, the desolation spoken of Daniel, and they realize that that one that is sitting world leader of all the world is not the Messiah. It is the Antichrist. And then... It's time to get out of Egypt. And they don't wait around for midnight. They got, Jesus tells them, you get out now. Now they got to know to get right because Jesus speaks about it. Somehow they're going to have to realize we don't look back. We don't go back like Lot's wife. We don't look back. We just go forward. You know when they were in the wilderness journey, there were some that kept on looking back at, at Egypt. Kept thinking about the leeks, the onions, and all that. There's two great events coming up in the world future. Really three. Rapture, tribulation period, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then the millennium. And then the great white throne judgment. 